Some people are focused on their losses, their flaws, their mistakes, the times they didn't measure up. That's why they're negative toward themselves. The wrong images are always playing. You need to focus on your victories. Focus on the times you succeeded, you resisted the temptation, you were disciplined. You felt like telling them off, but you bit your tongue. You went the extra mile at work. You excelled in that presentation. Don't let the negative take up the most space. You can't become who you're created to be if you're negative toward yourself. And yes, there are forces trying to stop us, but I wonder if you are your enemy. Circumstances may be against you. People will come against you. You can overcome those things. The problem is if you are against you. If you're negative towards yourself, that can keep you from your destiny. The biggest poison in us is regret. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast, and affects the next 20 years of your life because you made the wrong decision. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? Let the fear of regret fuel you to take action today, now. Hurt people will go above and beyond to hurt people. Insecure people will go out of their way to create insecurities. Dysfunctional people will take a peaceful, happy, and beautiful situation and figure out a way to create dysfunction where there is none. What we should do when somebody does us wrong, forgive them and let it drop. Leave it and let it go. Be the best. Lifelong personal development requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. It is often the case that we know what we need to do, but we lack the courage to take the risks. Instead, we make excuses for inaction. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. The great thing about excuses is that no matter what happens, excuses are always there waiting to be used. But the downside of excuses is that nobody really believes it. If you make excuses, they're going to know it and they're going to think less of you. But if you refuse to rely on excuses, people are going to know that too and they'll admire you for it. Maybe somebody's talking about you, trying to make you look bad. You could easily be upset, offended, try to pay them back. Why don't you try a different approach? Drop it, leave it, and let it go. You need large amounts of self-discipline to deal courageously with all the fear-inducing events of your life. Courage is rightly considered the foremost of the virtues, for upon it, all others depend. Often, fear is necessary to preserve life, prevent injury, and guard against financial mistakes. I don't want you to try to talk another person into staying with you, loving you, calling you, caring about you, coming to see you, staying in touch you. I mean, hang up the phone. When people can walk away from you, let them walk. If you ask people what they regret, especially as they get older, what they generally report is things not done. So they don't regret so much mistakes they've made, although of course people obviously regret mistakes they've made as well. So they don't exactly regret sins of commission, right, errors that they've actively made. They torment themselves for opportunities that had presented themselves that they did not, let's say, exploit or engage in. The regret we feel for things that we've done, though intense, only lasts a short period of time. But the regret that we feel for things that we missed out on, that can extend throughout a lifetime. Because most of us are scared and we choose to lead an easy life. And by doing so, we start to rack up those regrets. But there is a solution. You have to be willing to be bold. You have a great life in front of you, but your great life is in front of you. It's not behind you. What you did back there ain't got nothing to do with what God got for you. What you did back there was learn the lessons to get you to where you are at this particular moment right here. Bad decisions, hasty decisions, too fast and affects the next 20 years of your life because you made the wrong decision. If you'd have just waited, got all your information together, settled yourself, you'd have been better. What makes us make these fast decisions? Fear? It takes discipline to face your fears so you can conquer them. And that's what discipline is. Discipline means taking the hard road, the uphill road to do what's right. And regret 
in and of itself, it's worthless. So learn and move on. The ability to learn to say no and not to feel guilty about it, to me, is about the greatest success I have achieved. It's all a part of a process for growing for me. To me, to have the, in, the kind of internal strength and internal courage it takes to say, no, I will not let you treat me this way, is what success is all about. I will not be treated this way. I demand only the best for myself. As you might imagine, I don't think we should spend a lot of time regretting the choices we've made in the past. To spend time brooding over how things went, that's an illusion. What you're doing is suffering pointlessly in the present under the shadow of certain memories. You're telling yourself a story about something that might have been over and over again. How long do you want to do that for? And sometimes life is going to knock you down. But because you have been knocked down, don't mean that you finish. No. You've got some reasons. It might be your own sense of, of pride and determination and the kind of life that you want to create. There are people in their 30s and 40s who are still acting like adolescents. And there are even people in their 40s and 50s who are still acting like babies as far as their attitude toward responsibility is concerned. But the large number of people who shirk responsibility can also provide opportunities for you if you are determined to be different. If you decide to be one of the few who embraces responsibility, you can lead and you will deserve to lead. Churchill said responsibility is the price of greatness. And in my opinion, it's really a rather small price to pay. It means, first of all, that you accept the consequences of your actions. Responsibility means you look to yourself as the source of everything that happens to you. It means that you assume command, regardless of the hardships you may have undergone early in life, or the dozens of people who may have failed to understand you. I'm saying that regardless of the presence of those negative influences in your life, the best thing you can do, the strongest thing, the most empowering thing, and ultimately the wisest thing, is to accept responsibility for your own destiny, plain and simple. If you have enough reasons, you can do the most incredible things. Here's what you might be lacking, a long enough list of reasons. Reasons that drive you, reasons that get you up a little extra early, reasons that keep you up a little extra late. That's what makes the difference. You should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math, but when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always want to go inward and check it against your heart and soul. Here's the simple test. Does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Other than death, all failure is psychological. Does not mean that you won't lose some battles, because you will, we all will. But it does mean that as long as you don't surrender, as long as you don't quit, then you haven't failed. Here are some action exercises that you can do. Make a decision today to invest in yourself and getting better, as if your future depends on it, because it does. Identify the most important skills you have that determine the quality and quantity of results you get at your work and make a plan to get better in each one. Set excellent performance in your work as a goal and then determine exactly what you will need to do every day to join the top 20% or better in your field. I fought a good fight. I fought for my kids and I fought for what was right and I fought for my good health. And I fought for a good career that would bless my family. I fought a good fight. The encroachment. Opposites are in conflict and we're in the middle. And if you want something valuable, you got to fight for it. You have comeback power. When something happens to you, don't buy into what has happened to you. Buy into, I'm getting up out of here. I'm going to change this situation. This does not work for me. And I don't have the luxury of being depressed. I need to clear my head. Yes, we can see avoidance of responsibility all the time in both our personal 
and professional lives, we can see that most people aren't as successful as they wish they were. Do you see there's a connection between these two very common phenomena? I hope you'll understand that it's in your best interests to take responsibility for everything you do. But that's only the beginning. I'm also going to suggest that many times it's even best to accept responsibility for the mistakes of others, especially when you're in a managerial or leadership role. What do you do when you tried and failed and you want to quit and you want to give up? Sometimes you can be blessed and be unhappy because even though things are going right, they're not going according to what you had believed and expected and you know that something is missing out of your life. You got to clear your head so that the decision that you make represents the best in you. Be still and know that you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. You got to assure yourself. You have to encourage yourself. You have to clear your mind. The great thing about excuses and the really dangerous thing about them is that no matter what happens, excuses are always there waiting to be used. But the downside of excuses, even good ones, is that nobody really believes them. If you make excuses, they're going to know it and they're going to think less of you. But if you refuse to rely on excuses, people are going to know that too and they'll admire you for it. This is especially true in business. One of the classic examples happened about 15 years ago. A widely advertised healthcare product from a leading manufacturer was shown to be unsafe and the company responded by pulling every single box off the shelves at a cost of millions of dollars. Was the company destroyed? Hardly. If they had done anything else, there would have been a tremendous loss of confidence. Instead, there was honest acceptance of responsibility for a mistake. Contrast this with what happened recently to a leading manufacturer of computer chips. When a new microprocessor didn't perform up to expectations, the company made excuses. It was a minor problem, something that would crop up once in a lifetime, and so forth. Were these excuses valid? Maybe, maybe not. But it doesn't really matter, does it? So many people use excuses, but nobody really buys them. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your story doesn't end in the night. The night is temporary. Don't get discouraged. It's just a night season. It's not permanent. It's not how your story ends. You may not see anything happening. Keep moving forward in faith. Keep believing. It's just a matter of time before the morning breaks forth. That accepting responsibility is one of the highest forms of human maturity. To put yourself on the line, a willingness to be accountable is really the defining characteristic of adulthood. Anyone who has raised children knows how true this is. Just look at a baby during the first few years of life. Every facial expression, every tentative word has one message for the baby's parents. I am totally dependent on you. I can't be held responsible for the consequences. I can't do anything for myself even if I try. After all, I'm just a baby. 10 or 12 years later, of course, as the boy or girl enters adolescence, this message to the parents will be very different. It will sound something like this. I want to be totally independent. Why don't you just leave me alone? I don't want to do anything but think about myself. I certainly don't want to accept any responsibility. It's only when we're at last grown up that the first two messages, I'm totally independent of you, and I'm totally dependent on you, finally turn into, you can depend on me, which is the truly adult outlook. The night seasons are not the end. The bad breaks, the disappointments, that's simply another step on the way to your destiny. 
But let me tell you what ought to cause great joy to come to your life is if you'd stop comparing yourself to other people and you would just remember where you came from and remember where you started. You're doing more. You're seeing more. You're achieving more. But if you start comparing yourself with someone else, you can get discouraged because they're doing more maybe than you're doing. Sooner or later, all of us face situations in which we must decide whether to accept responsibility for a problem or look for ways to avoid responsibility. Let's look at the various options and decisions that are now open to you. First, there's the role played by intention. In other words, was the outcome of your action what you intended it to be? And if it was not, should you still accept responsibility for that outcome? This is a very serious issue in the way we think about responsibility. In many areas of criminal law, for instance, the intention to commit a crime must be present in order for the accused to be held criminally responsible. This intention is something quite different from mere negligence. But we don't have to enter a courtroom to see the important role intention plays in accepting responsibility ourselves or assigning it to others. Don't you remember when you were a kid and you left the screen door open so that the cat ran outside and was lost all afternoon? What did you say to avoid responsibility? You said, it was an accident. You said, I didn't mean to do that. As I pointed out earlier, there are lots of people who still use these childlike rationalizations well into their middle age. But if and when you decide you want to be an adult, you begin to see the whole question of intention as nothing more than another opportunity for excuse making, and you should refuse to participate in it. If you get beat, unless you're dead, you are not defeated and you have not failed. What you've done is you've learned, you've gained experience, and you're still alive. So get up and go get after it. My glory doesn't happen in front of a crowd. It doesn't happen in a stadium or on a stage. There are no medals handed out. It happens in the darkness of the early morning, in solitude, where I try, and I try, and I try again. With everything I have to be the best that I can possibly be, better than I was yesterday better than people thought I could be, better than I thought I could be, then claim one victory that no one can ever take away from me ever. A victory that is earned every single day. A victory of determination and will and discipline. A victory achieved because I will not stop. It's the character of who you are. It's not the title that makes you. It's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater of the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, and it's raining, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. How you hold yourself in the small things of life. Build the character winning blocks of the things that we'll remember for. Do the job right or don't do it at all. That's the same person who has his hand raised on the podium one day. Same mother It's how you look at something. If your name's attached to it, then you do it right. The best of your ability every single time. Some of y'all so caught up on the game that you don't get it. It is in practicing. It is in eating right. It is in making good decisions that you look a certain way. It is how you practice. It is what you do that makes you look like you look. It is the process of the grind that shapes you and forms you. It's not the game. And that's why most of y'all get beat in the game or make mistakes in the game because you think grinding is what happens when the sun comes out. You think grinding is what happens when the lights come on. You think grinding is what happens when people get in the stage. That's not grind. The real grind is in the dark when nobody sees you, when nobody knows what you're doing. When you're studying without coach, when you putting in those extra reps, when you watching those videos and you getting inspired, when you change your music, 
It's the process that makes you sweet. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. It's yours. If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. Because it's my time. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Ain't no such thing as tomorrow. We only got today. If you can't right now, there's no one looking, man. And how you hold yourself, how you see yourself. What do you do when no one's watching? If you do it then, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it when everyone's watching.